Hello and welcome to the Trial On Podcast. I'm your host, Bo. This is my co-host, the People's Host, Denny. How you going, mate? Yeah, I'm doing good, mate. Thanks. How are you? Eels beat the Storm. Cowboys beat the Dragons. How good is that? The giveaway. It's over. It's gone off. The giveaway is finally over. So the prize was an NRL jersey of your choice. So the, um, what is it? The entries, they're closed now. So they closed yep. on Saturday, I think it was. Is yeah, when... after the Eels win. And we'll be announcing the winner uh, later on Instagram Live. Uh, that'll be, you probably would have already seen that. So congratulations to whoever won that. That's very good. But congratulations to whoever has used Manscaped so far. That's what I want to talk about. Manscaped.com.au. Your balls will thank you. Denny, why do you use it? Righty, I use Manscaped. It's 100% waterproof, so I can use it in the shower. No more cleaning up all those hairs on the bathroom floor. Just uh, stop them down the drain. Uh, another thing I like about it, they use a, uh, a special blade. What's it called? A skin safe replaceable blade. So yeah. don't got to worry about cuts or nothing like that. Since I've been using it personally in since February, sorry, no cuts, no irritation to the ball area. It's beautiful. No irritation of the ball area. That is a really, really good point. Uh, everything is cleaned up. It's nice. 20% off worldwide shipping if you use our code TRILINE at checkout. Guys, your wife, I'll thank you. You come tell me you bought it, I'll personally thank you. I'll reply and I'll say thank you for that because you've just helped yourself to that, I think. What do you think? Yeah, no, thank you. I'll do thank it. you in Buy advance. I'll, I'm thanking you in advance. Thanks for buying it, guys. <laughs> All right. Let's get into uh, what was probably the biggest talking point out of the weekend. Um, I spoke to you pretty much as soon as it happened, and it blew up online, obviously, uh, the Latrell Mitchell hit on Joey Manu. Now, Latrell Mitchell was handed a grade two reckless high tackle, uh, which carries a base charge of uh, five games, 500 points, but he has four prior non-similar offenses in the last two years, so he got 20% loading. That puts him at six to nine weeks. Of course, he accepted the early guilty play on that one. So he's only going to serve six of those games. Firstly, biggest talking point, Simbin send-off. Uh, he ended up getting Simbin on the day. Thoughts? Look, the shot, it was a bad shot. Um, like They're both moving pretty quickly. Latrell's got a split second to make a decision. And in this instance, in this case, well, he got it wrong. Um, I think he does deserve to spend an extended a period, a period of time sorry, on the sidelines. Um, yep. But what he's getting, like the hate comments that people are sending him or that are writing, I just don't think that's on. Oh, no, no, that's just stupid. Um, I've never had to keep a closer eye on my comment section in the history of we've been doing this. On TikTok, Instagram, <clears throat> I would have deleted probably 50 comments, which is way higher than what you would expect, especially in mm. 2021. Uh, racist comments. Uh, a lot of fat shaming comments, just things that are inappropriate. And that's only what I got. Like, we're not that big of a page. Like, mm. think about those bigger pages that put it out. I c couldn't even imagine. And then Luttrell himself in his DMs, he would have got tons of hate. Don't do that, guys. Look, he's a Pelicans. If you're messaging NRL players, you're a loser, okay? Firstly, I think it was a send-off, uh, direct forceful contact with the head. Just can't do that. Um Obviously, the NRL thought it was a send-off as well because Graham uh, Henry Perinara was stood down for the rest of the weekend. But do I think it was intentional? No, I don't. Obviously, Latrell plays a certain kind of way, uh, very high energy, high emotion. And if you play that kind of way, it can it can be good. We saw it in Origin, like we saw the good side of it. Like he had a great Origin series, but he mm. plays high emotion, high emotion, high energy. And when it comes up, it's good. When it doesn't, it's bad. And the the margin for error there is this big. So. If you're going to play that way, you've got to deal with the consequences. And the consequences here is he'll serve six games on the sideline, which I think was more than fair. Yeah, yeah, 100% more than fair. Yeah. Um, I wanted to talk about something else. Obviously, uh, Joey Manu is okay. He's in hospital. Um, he had surgery, and he said he's recovering all right. Apparently, Latrell got in contact with him later to see if he was all right, which was good. I think, I think one of the reasons this blew up so much more than the incident was Joey's reaction to the incident. Mm. And that created a very emotional reaction from Roosters fans and probably rugby league fans everywhere, the way uh, Joey Manu went up to Latrell Mitchell. And I feel like Latrell reacted poorly to that part of the oh, 100 he did. incident, I think. What you make of what happened after after he come back on? Um, I, thought, I thought the game just got out of hand. Yeah, look, um, 
I think at that moment, I think Latrell was just too like too into it. Yeah. Like he, he was just in his head. So I think after he scored his second try, he actually threw the ball at one of the plays he ran over. Yeah. Which And I'm, that was Yeah, that's that was dumb, I thought. I thought that was just dumb. And I've seen people try and defend that as well, saying he just threw the ball at the ground. Now you aren't that naive. You can you can defend you, you can defend whoever you want, but like don't be stupid about it. Like he obviously threw the ball at the guy's head. That was obvious. Yeah. Which was dumb. Um I felt like he reacted very poorly to the way Joey come up to him. And what made it worse is we've just seen, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, we saw how Harry and I reacted when he got Jerome Hughes. Like he couldn't have been um, more sympathetic to Jerome Hughes. And he, we got the public apology and he went up and apologized to him on the ground. And you see that compared to this. And a lot, I saw a lot of people um, drawing comparisons to that and, that made this incident, I think, ten times worse. Mm, I'm not. I don't think I'll compare the two instances or the two. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm saying people have been though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's what's made it worse. I think that's what people have saw that and seen because they are mates. They used to live together. Um, mm-hmm. and people have seen the way that Latrell reacted after the hit, and it's uh blown the incident up. I think. Uh, also, after the hit, we saw Joey Manu's, uh, the NRL physio shared that. How bad was that when he blew his nose and mm. the eye puffed up? Yeah, it was no good. Um, yeah, look, uh, even Latrell said after Origin when he had a bit of a blue with uh, his actual form, his current teammate, Dan Gagai. Yeah. Uh, he's saying he's got no mates on the field. And I mean, I think you, you can have that attitude to an extent, but I mean, obviously, he said they were roommates. I think yeah, I, he definitely took it a little bit too far, and you could see Joey was upset. Mm. Um, Not so much angry, but yeah, and that yeah. that made it worse. I think mm. I'd seen his reaction, and I could imagine it just fires Roosters fans up. I thought Trent Robinson was very good in the post match. <clears throat> he said, uh, "That's how Latrell plays," and we got that version of Latrell for a long time. Now we're on the other end of it, which is pretty good comments. Though, like he obviously likes the bloke, but mm. you could see Roosters players weren't too happy with it. Now, Trent Robinson, I don't know if he's been fined yet, but probably by the time this comes out, he would have been fined. He will be hit with a fine by the NRL for how he spoke about the referees. But I think he said what everyone was thinking. I think we we went on to see in throughout the weekend that they're just not up to standard right now. Mm. But I wonder if that's because of all the rule changes on the fly from higher ups that the referees just can't keep up. They, they don't know what a sim bin and a send-off is anymore. Well, hardly anyone does. Yeah, well, I, I think... I think that's a really good point. Um, the amount of changes that has come into the game in the last two years, there's probably hasn't been that many changes in the whole history of the NRL from from those two years back to the start of the NRL. I, yeah. I think there's, I can't think of any, and or too many rule changes since I've been watching the NRL. So and ones that have changed the fabric of the game, like this six again, and then just just. Magic round, we change the rules around head eyes, mm. which I understand we need to do that for the safety of the players. But the referees had not that long to react to that. And now we see a, we see a head eye and the referees maybe send it off and we think, oh, what are you doing? That's not a send off. That's a simbin. Mm. So then now we see this one and he goes, okay, well, I'm going to, I'm going to simbin him then. And everyone's like, well, no, that's a send off. Mm. But just no one knows. So I think they just need to leave the game alone for a little bit. Another thing that I do not like at the moment, players staying down. <laughs> I think I think it costs Joey Manu. I think if Joey Manu had to stay down, I think Latrell would have definitely been sent off. But players staying down, we see it all the time. They they cop anything anywhere near the head, they stay down. Or if it's the crusher, we see them getting up, holding their neck. Denny, how do we fix this? Righty, so we had a bit of a discussion about this one, and there's, there's a couple ways to fix this, but I, we think the best way is... If you stay down from either the head high or pressure on the neck, it should be an automatic HIA. So that's a 15-minute head assessment, head injury assessment, sorry. And whoever goes on for you or for that player, when that player went on, when and if that player returns, the player that went on for them has to come off. I like that. So no more of this. You see this all the time. Like a player will go off if someone's put on a report for a head high or crush or whatever. That player will come off for, what, two minutes, I think it is? Yeah. They'll send forward on, 
And then when they bring that fo- that player back on, a different forward will come off. It's pretty much like a free interchange. Yeah, see, I don't like that part of it. That's rotten the rules, which they could do now because it is the rule. But I think if a player gets <clears throat> stays down, it, it, and if they hold their neck at all, if they stay down for that crusher holding the neck, you have to go off for 15 minutes. Mm. And then whoever come on for you, you make the straight swap back. You have to do it. Otherwise, the person doesn't go back on. And I, I like that. I think that that would stop people staying down. We see it's so transparent because we see the ones where they stay down until the referee blows a whistle and then they pop straight to their feet. Mm. And I think all teams do it. There's some teams that are worse than others, but all teams do it. And I think we need to uh, try and stop that the best way we can. Yeah. Two teams that were real bad for it on the weekend, Melbourne and Canberra. Like I was watching the, the Canberra game and even the commentators, they were saying, yeah. well, there's a lot of milking going on here and not too many injuries. And, and they were getting the penalties for it. And I think that might have played a reason for why the Raiders kind of came back, but we'll get, we'll get into that later. I'm- I feel like the referees have their hands tied, though. Like, because they're not, the, the argument is they're not doctors, right? So, what's going to happen is a referee's going to say to a player one time, I'll oh, stop milking it. And then the players, it's going to come out that the player had a broken jaw or something. Yeah. And then that, that'll kill it forever. But if we just, if we, we've just said, we urge on the side of player safety the whole time. We say, all right, well, you're, you're hurt. For your safety, I'm going to ask you to leave the field for 15 minutes hmm. to get checked because I don't know. I'm not a doctor. Hmm. And I think that would stop people staying down. Yeah, 100%. 100%. All right, South obviously going to be without their fullback, uh, Latrell Mitchell, uh, for the rest of the season. So they need a fullback. Uh, Blake Taffy seems like the obvious choice. I'm going to throw in another choice. I'm going to say Cody Walker plays fullback and Benji Marshall plays six. Thoughts? I think uh, Blake Taffy, is it Taffy? Mm, I think so. I think he should. Um, I think he should just get the fullback spot. Coming know. into big games, big games, young bloke. Yeah, I know, but Cody Walker, he, he's playing great in, at the six at the moment. Well, he's leading the league in tries, isn't he? Yeah, I think or so. Like thirty something, thirty odd, or twenty odd, something. I just think it. I think it doesn't disrupt that left edge shift if. Because Benji's already filled in a lot, so he knows he knows what happens when they go left. Cody obviously knows he's the king of it. If he gets out the back on those shifts, it's not going to disrupt that left edge too much. And that's their whole game. That left edge is their whole game. Okay. So that's why I think Cody, they they will probably go with Blake Taffy. I'll just throw out, you know, trying to be the smartest person in the room. Like, Danny's getting a phone call. Who's that, mate? Oh, uh, it's uh, my girlfriend. Your girlfriend? But she'll get it. Can you tell her we're in business hours? Yeah, we're in business hours. So I'm not I'm not gonna answer it. She better not call again. She might. She will. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um last thing before we get into the games. Who's the last team that makes top eight, mate? Uh so it was out of either the Sharks, Raiders, or the Titans, but the Titans are a long shot. There's a, a lot's got to go on for, for the Titans to get up. Um yep. so I've gone the Raiders. I think the Raiders, they've got the Roosters. This week, probably uh, they're probably going to be resting a few players. And I think- yeah, well, they're they're a bit banged up. Oh, that's an understatement. They're very banged up. They've, I've, I don't know if I've seen a worse injury season in history than what they've gone through. Um, Not been good. I'm going to go the sharks. I I picked the sharks. A, well, about two months ago now, I picked the sharks to make the top eight. Okay, I'm going to stick strong with them. They've look. My my head says the Raiders find a way, but my heart says the Sharks, so I'll say the Sharks. Uh, they just got to beat Melbourne. I'll tell you what's going to hurt them. Para beat Melbourne. That's what's going to hurt them because I feel like Melbourne are going to want to, you know, just get a win and get back on track where I think if they beat Para, we would be seeing the Storm Reserve grade side. Uh, yeah, the Storm Reserve grade side come out. Yeah. So I think Para beating Melbourne will really, really hurt the Sharks here, but hopefully they can get it done. Anyway, let's get into the games. What was the first one? Uh, the first one was the Knights. Uh, they defeat the Titans 15 points to 14. And I actually got to thank you here this one because uh, when we do the, our Wednesday shows, I actually have to screenshot the tips. Um, okay. So you tipped the Knights. I tipped the Titans because I sent you your tips second. It's kept your tips there. So I actually got, got the Knights right. Oh, you like that? Yeah, I do. You missed the change in your tip. Um, yeah, good win for the Knights, I thought. Uh, I thought the Titans were all right, but 
The Knights just seem to be finding a way to win. Uh, Mitchell Pearce knocks over a field goal there. I thought a big uh, point in this game was the way Kalen Ponga got himself into the game constantly. Mm. Look, Kalen Ponga was on the ball. He, he, he was in dummy half a, a little bit as well, but he was at first receiver a lot. And I think if he's getting his hand on the ball, he's one of the most dangerous players in the competition. If he's got his hand on the ball, other teams should be nervous, especially in that top eight, because he can make things happen around him. I still think they need to find a way to get Bradman Best into the game a little bit more. Mm. But, again, it feels like a game that got away from the Titans. Yeah, for sure. I, I was going to say, um, on the Knights, I think their attack, it seems a little off at the moment. Yeah. That's why I've got in. So they've got so many uh, great attacking players. As you said, Ponga is great when, when he goes looking for the ball. And you said Bradman Best on the edge there. They've got Frizzell. I mean, Watson's, he's quick on his feet. He's quite elusive, yep. if you will. And, I mean, Pierce is, I mean, he's obviously a great attacking player as well. But they've only just been scraping by these lower teams like the Titans and the Bulldogs last week. Like, the Bulldogs, they're one of the worst defensive teams. In the world. They are the worst now. Yeah, they yeah. are the worst defensive team. And, and for the for the Knights to only score, what was it, 22 points, mm. when they've got such a, such a good attacking team, I think that they, not so much worried about their attack going to the finals, but I think they just need to find kind of their feet, I guess, because this, this this core hasn't really played together too much. It's been a lot yeah, of injuries for them. I agree with that. I think it, that might even lend a little bit more to why I was so impressed with Kalen Ponga because maybe they he feels like they are down a little bit of attacking ones. So instead of letting the game go past him and then them fixing it this week at training, he got these hands on the ball as much as he could mm. in that game. And they end up getting the job done. Um, the Titans... Well, if the Titans had won this, they'd be in the box seat to be in the semifinals mm. because they'd be coming up against the Warriors and they're the only team that are the favourites this week. So, huge loss for the Titans. Dave Feeder scored a good try, but other than that, I thought they were patchy. Yeah, for sure. Pardon me? Anyway, good win for the Knights. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, Raiders defeat the Warriors for the next game, 28 points at 16. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> I don't know what's yeah. going on with me. Um, this game was actually a lot closer than what the scoreline says. The Raiders won by, what, 12, but there was two really late yeah. tries in there, like in the 78th and the 80th minute. Um, that said, that puts the Warriors out of the finals race. I think they were, they were a chance if they won that and next week. Yeah. But obviously they're out for good now. What's going on with the Warriors, man? They, they started so hot too. Like, they were all over them early. Mm, yeah, for sure. I, well, they are missing quite a few players. Yeah. And there was a stat that you threw out to me, either last week or the week before. I don't know when. But something about the Warriors losing an amount of games by six or less. I think it I think it was seven games. Seven games. And if it, they had won those games, they'd be in, what, fifth or sixth? Yeah, they, they would be, yeah, almost in fourth. They would be equal fourth. Equal they would have going into this game. I mean, they've... Another game they could have won too. I think... And the, the Raiders did score late, but I thought they controlled the second half a little bit better than... The Warriors, and you, you you did say that they were staying down a little bit, but I thought they controlled the game. I thought um their halves were a little bit better in the second half than the Warriors, and then the Warriors' last tackle options seriously were abysmal mm-hmm. in the second half, and they probably lacked that half. I think uh, Chad Townsend ended up going off or something. Yeah, that probably hurt them. But Sean Johnson going back there next year, that's a pretty big in, and they got a good forward pack. Uh, Reese Walsh will be better for another year in first grade, so I think they've got good things coming to them. The Warriors, but. I never thought they'd make the semifinals this year. I know they went on a run late, but I just they weren't a semifinal team to me. Yeah, nah. Well, they've been playing. Well, I, th- I think it's been a good effort for them since they've yep. been away from home, like family and friends for the last two years. So, for them to even kind of be in the conversation to make the eight later on in the years, you know, good on them. Yep, um, definitely. But Rapiner for the Raiders, he, he played a pretty good game on the weekend. He's been doing pretty well at full. I think he's been him. outstanding. And he's um, been yeah, he actually earned himself a new contract with the Raiders. I reckon he's gotten fitter. Oh, 100%. You saw- I reckon he's gotten fitter through the year. Mm. We saw that game. I, we talked about it on the show. Uh, the Panthers game when uh, Chance went went off. That was the game he got injured. And Rapiner went to fullback. And he gassed and out. He, yeah, he gassed out. Mm. But he's gotten fitter through the year. And I think he's been one of the better players in the competition in the last month. Yeah, for I think sure. He's had a really, I think he's had a really good month. And... Well, that game that they played and Chance come back and he and R- Rappiner went off. Remember they swapped Chance for Rappiner and I said 
like they needed to keep Rafa Nair out there. Like he was the he's their most dangerous player. Mm. If they can make the semi-finals, they've got enough players in good positions to trouble some teams as well. Mm. Just because they got they got a good forward pack, and Josh Papali, he's very dangerous with with and without the ball. Like he he can put shots on, he can intimidate sides, and you you still got Jack Warden, who let's not forget he was the best player in the competition last year. Yeah, so they've still got players down there. Um, I like that the competition feels like it's gotten a bit closer in the last month. Yeah, for sure. Like, Penrith and Melbourne were flying, absolutely flying, and now it feels like it's the league's come a little bit closer together. It feels like there's maybe five teams that can win a competition rather than two. Okay. Which is good to see. Um, yeah, but other than that, good win for the Raiders. I, I personally think they're in the box seat to make the semis. I think uh, they're a better chance than the Sharks, but I'll stick with me Sharkies because that's who I picked. Why not? Why not? Anyway, next on to the next game. The Bunnies defeat the Roosters 54-12. to 12. Obviously, we spoke about the Latrell Mitchell incident. Um, but yeah, it was kind of Roosters, not Roosters, sorry, Bunnies came out early, put on a bit of a lead, and then the Roosters started to, to make a comeback. And then I don't know what happened. I guess Bunnies just went on with it. Yeah, people saying that if Latrell had been sent off, um, maybe the result would have been different, I think. Didn't the Rabbitohs score when it was 12 on 13 anyway? I think uh, they found a way to score anyway. I'm, I'm sure, pretty I'm sure, sure they would have. That that happens quite a lot. Well, that it's, it's been, weird, that, isn't it? That has been happening quite a lot. Yeah, teams find a way to score when they're a man down. So now, 57th minute, he got put in the bin. Um, they scored four minutes later. They scored four minutes later. So I did, I don't think the result would have been any different. Uh, the Rabbitohs too good here. They just they just got so many points in them. Yeah. They have so many points in them. I thought Adam Reynolds was outstanding again. He's, he's a great pickup for the for the Broncos, you think? You'd think at this point. Well, he's a top three halfback in the competition. Probably th- who you're probably Jerome Hughes and I'm still Nathan going Deary. Jerome. Still going Jerome, but I think Adam Reynolds has been outstanding this year. And I think I think he's been overshadowed by Cody Walker, which I think is very unfair. I reckon he's I reckon he's so good. Um yeah, great win from the from the bunnies. Uh, the roosters just they're out of troops. That's that's what they're they just got no one. Yeah. Well, we saw the, there was a, there's a graphic somewhere of a, a team that they've like of injuries or suspensions that they could that they could have. That's probably better than the than the team they run now. Yeah, exactly. I did have a look though. The roosters have struggled against these sides in the last two years. They've won one of their last twelve against Penrith. The roost, uh, the Rabbitohs, and the Storm—they've really struggled. Uh, a lot of people will look to this year and say, "Oh, well, that's because of all the injuries." But so the over two years. seasons, yeah. yeah, over two seasons, like it's obviously something going on there. They they just can't compete for long enough with these sides mm. at the moment. Yeah, for sure. Alrighty, probably on to your favorite game of the round: the Cowboys defeat the Dragons, thirty-eight points to twenty-six. Dragons are still yet to win since that infamous barbecue. After, I, I'm, after a I love that stat. One point win against the uh, the competition heavyweights, the Warriors. But they just had to they had to party after that game. You know, what a win! <laughs> um, no, I absolutely love that stat, and I hope uh, who's got them this week? I think Manly. No, we got Manly. Who's got the Dragons this week? Uh, wait, I'll let you know. It's a good bunnies have got bunnies. the Dragons. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so there's every chance that they won't win post barbecue, <laughs> and that'll be the narrative forever. Like, it doesn't matter who they played and how many players are out, they did not win a game after the barbecue. With it, and they were what they were like fifth or something, sixth. They were up anyway. There. Anyway, they were they were on top in this game as well. I thought they were playing better, but there was like this period after half time that I just don't. It, it looked like they had ten players on the field. They just couldn't tackle. I think it was could like- not tackle. Eight minutes or something, they ran in four tries, three or four tries. One of them was off a kickoff set, and would, they, they had two to the right, and then they just went for an open side shift, and it was like six on three. Well, there was there was two off a kickoff, so they scored, and off, not off, not, not off the kickoff, but off the kickoff set. Yeah, set, yeah. They scored off that set from the kickoff, and then they kicked the, it was kickoff again, and they scored again off that set. I don't know what was going on with the Dragons. Anyway, it felt good. I thought Tommy Deedham was outstanding in this game. Good yeah. on him. I was happy for him. Um, he looked to run the ball a little bit more, I thought. A little bit of confidence. 
Um, what would you make of the younger Dragons players? I thought they were really solid in this one too, uh, especially around the ruck. They looked like they they did know what they were doing, like they had played together a, a fair bit. Sullivan, Sloan, and Amon. Amon, yeah. I thought they were really good. I thought when Jaden Sullivan went off, was it yes. Jaden Sullivan? Yeah, when they, he went off, yeah. yeah. They kind of, I don't know, they kind of just have that that fire, yeah, like that spark out of dummy half. I thought, I thought that same thing when they took him off they they really lost their way i thought he's good in dummy half maybe a little bit of a future there for him yeah. especially when they get benny hunt back you keep a moan at six and then salone at the back that's a good then, that's a good young core yeah and then you got benny hunt leading them around that's not a bad little spine hmm. just don't barbecue too much guys yeah. like, <laughs> please please <laughs> for love of God. anyway dragons fans would be pretty disappointed with this one i think um another game that they were probably in a box seat to win but I'm happy for the Cowboys. We'll come out this week. We'll lap manly, and we'll finish with two wins of the year. It's nice. Two well, wins to, to finish the year. Yeah, well, you guys broke a 10-game losing streak, so good on you. Let's go. Uh, on to Let's the next. Go. Sharks defeat the Broncos, 24 points to 16. Sharks had to win this one to stay in the race, I thought. Um, good on them. I thought they, they did well to come out after Brisbane came out last time and and, and put it to them, flogged them. Yeah. Uh, but still, I don't think they were outstanding in this one. Like, I think Brisbane had what twelve players for twenty sixty minutes. minutes of the games. Yeah. Oh so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sixty, yeah, 60 minutes, ago, minutes yeah. of the game, and they still only managed to get it done by what, eight points. Um, I thought they were okay. There was moments in the game where it felt like the game was in the balance, and the Sharks had a little bit more energy than the Broncos, and mm. that's what I meant by saying the Sharks had more to play for. Mm. Okay. You know what I mean? Like the Sharks are playing for their season, the Broncos. Just playing for a little bit of pride. I still really like this Broncos side. I think, I think they're going to be a dangerous team next year, mate. I saw. Did you see the second sin bit? What's his name? Brendan someone. Uh, Brendan Pakara. Yeah, Pekura. yeah. For dangerous contact, you go back and watch that. It is ridiculous. Yeah, like it's not even one second after he passes the ball, he gets he gets tackled. Yeah, it's a bit of a dog shot, but ten in the yeah. bin. Oh, come on, that's soft. But put that down to the referees not knowing anymore. They they don't know. They they got no idea. And this is after the little trail incident, so they're probably a little bit on edge. If something happens, let's let's get them off. Mm. You know what I mean? So we don't. They just don't know. Um, I thought the Broncos were okay. This is a bit of a probably one of the lower games of the round for mine. Yeah, for sure. On to one of the better games of the round. Para defeat the Great Storm, twenty two points to ten. What a game! What a win! Uh, I know Melbourne, they they weren't playing too well. But they, I think they played at 69%. Um, so, obviously, if if you're completing that yeah. low, you, you're going to lose you're gonna lose some games. But, to, the, to Para's credit, you can only beat what's in front of you. Yeah, exactly. And they completed 90%. And I thought they attacked with their defense, which was really good to see. I thought they were really strong in defense. They still had to defend their line a fair bit, and they done that really well too. I was really happy with the Eels' performance. And this, guys, this is what I've been talking about. This is why I've been so down on the Eels in the last, what, six weeks, month. Yeah. Because they can beat this side. They can match it with these top teams. Don't listen to other people saying they don't have the squad or they don't, whatever they say. I think the Eels are a good team, right? And they've proved it here. They've just knocked off the best side in the comp. They're the only ones that have beat them twice this year, obviously, because mm. I think they've won a thousand in a row. The Storm, the last team to beat them tw- to beat the Storm twice in a year, went on to make a grand final. So they've got themselves back in the fight. They believe they they should believe that they can beat these sides now. It's a it's par- Parramatta's season to lose. I think. I think if they get beat, that's on them. That's not on anyone else. Hundred percent, hundred percent. This will be a huge, um, huge confident boost going into the finals. So hopefully they keep playing like that. Keep it up. Boys. Uh, and I, I think they just uh, tank this week. I don't even bother this game. You you got bigger fish to fry. Mm, just sure. run out a B grade squad and uh, look after Mitchell Moses. Especially that's you got to rest him. Mm. You got to they will rest Gutherson, but you got to rest Moses, and then just build to that first week of the semis. Hopefully, um, hopefully you finish fourth or fifth. I think if you finish fifth, you you avoid Melbourne again until a grand final. So fifth isn't that bad. Well, that'd be good. We'd love that. Uh, on to the next. Merely defeat the Doggies. Uh, 36 points to 18. Uh, doggies in this one. Awesome defense. Awesome goal yeah. line defense. 
Um, I thought that right hand side did a really good job of shutting down Tommy, Tommy Turbo, yep. and his and um, affecting um, his kind of what, what? that that a right to left shift. I thought they defended that really well. Yeah. That's been a go to for Manly this year, and yeah. and you think they they end up um I think what did they lose to the Rabbitohs by eight points as well, something like that. Yeah, so they've been okay against those better sides. They're their own worst enemy, though. Mm. The, the Bulldogs. They they get themselves in the game and then they give away a penalty. They do it all the time. Yeah. I watched it six times on the weekend. They they pin them in their corner and then they would give away a penalty. Or Jack Heverington would shoot off the line and give. Does that bloke like playing rugby league? Because he wants to get himself suspended every week. Just dumb shit. Mm. Um. Anyway, like you said, they managed to shut down Tommy, which. It doesn't mean much because he still scored a hat trick and well, the, the, I think there's a good reason for that. It was in the second half, right? So the first yep. half, that that doggy's right hand side kind of shut he, shut him down, um, stopped him from getting his outside backs on the outside. Yeah. In the second half, all his tries were off Abel's. Yeah. It's so they, that, straight yeah, back up the yeah. rock. So they've got the they've got the same shape, but then late, Tommy changes his line and runs back on the inside and then it gets those tied forwards in the middle. I think that's I think that's how he scored his three three Just tries. so people know at home uh, an A ball is an unders ball. Like person drifts across the field, other person comes under him. Because we just called it an A ball. But yeah. Uh anyway, he still ran for two hundred and sixty meters, still got himself in the game. Like we said, even when he can't get himself in the game, he gets himself in the game. You know yeah. what I mean? Like he just yeah. goes looking for it. That first try was not a try. I don't know anyone, any actual rugby league fan that would think that was a try. Um, the hair pull isn't a penalty. No. I mean, the bloke's running around with dreadlocks. Like, what's what's he meant to do? He's trying to grab onto something. That's not a penalty. Poor Bulldogs have won five penalty counts all year. Five <laughs> penalty counts. And I had a look too. I had a look at all of them. Some of them are seriously that lopsided. Like, I've seen 9-1, 8-1. Like it was, it's nuts. They cannot win a penalty count. They cannot get themselves in the game. They complete higher than any other team in the comp, and they just, they just give away penalties. Well, they can't back it up on the other end. That's what I mean. And they, they just get themselves out of the game. They get themselves out of the game. And they, I think they've scored three hundred and something points this year, three hundred and four or something points. They're the only team not to score four hundred in this season, and they're minus four hundred. I think differential. Oh, well, better luck to them next year. They're getting a few good attacking weapons uh, next season, so hopefully they can turn that around. If you think if they can get a fair share of, share of possession and not just let the pressure off all the time, they'll be an okay side. Like, you bring Matty Burton into that mix, he's going to he's gonna find you some points somewhere. Mm. I think they can be a better side. I still don't think they're a top eight side, but they, get them, they give themselves a chance with their attitude and defense and... Their, their ability to hold the ball, but they just got nothing to back it up. You know what I mean? At mm. the moment. And to think, it, so you said that the most penalised team in the comp. Yeah. They're bringing um, Tavita Pangai Jr. That's good. Oh, yeah. Tavita next. Pangai Jr. Luke Thompson loves a penalty. Jack Heverington it should change his middle name to penalty. The bloke averages more than one penalty a game. And it's nuts. No, sorry, in the middle. Yeah. Anyway, uh, onto the last game in the round Tigers defeat. Not the Tigers. The Panthers defeat the Tigers, thirty points to sixteen. Uh, this one was a messy game for the Panthers. Yeah. But Nathan Cleary, especially, uh, he kicked the ball out in full a few times. Dropped the ball cold. I don't think I've seen that too many times for him no. either. Well, now we know he's finally human. He finally has a a bad game. I don't think he's had a bad game this year in the last two years. So you reckon they just struggled to get up for this one a little bit, like a bit of a nothing game for them? Hundred percent for sure. It seemed like they were trying to get like a little bit of energy and trying to get themselves into the game, but I think I think all those top four sides have just one eye on the semifinals. The the real side that we saw put a team to the sword this week was the Bunnies, and they played the Roosters, where there's a lot of hate in that. Mm. Where the rest of the sides is a bit of nothing. Like even even the Storm Para game, it didn't seem like the Storm were too interested till halfway through that game when they when they thought they were a chance of losing. But I was going to ask you, like, when's the last time you've seen? Team one and team two complete under seventy percent for a game. Yeah, like nah. I don't think ever. No, nah. yeah, you're right. And the the Tigers, well, they I'll say they looked okay in patches, but Jesus, there's some of their defensive efforts are disgusting. To be honest, mm. well, there's not much to say on them anymore. Like 
the season been over for a little while. Yeah, well, hopefully they. I don't. I don't know what. What have they got going for them next year? Anyone coming in? Anything doing for the Tigers? Are they destined for the spoon? <laughs> Probably not. No, similar ninth spot. I reckon next year. You reckon? Yeah. What's the name? The Bulldogs win their first spoon in eight years. I think. What's that? Twenty thirteen. Early prediction for the spoon next year. Then. <laughs> it's a bit tough, eh? It's a bit yeah, tough. Well, you got to think some, some of those lower teams, like. They're supposed to be good. Like the Broncos got a good pack, and they get yeah. Adam, Adam Reynolds next year. Um, Doggy the Cowboys used... should be a little bit better for the run next year. Yeah, well, they've got Chad Townsend coming in, so the top four spot locked in. <laughs> <laughs> I think the Dragons will be a better side next year. We already said the Warriors will be a better side next year. Doggies will be, surely. The only side I don't see being a better side next year it's is Cowboys. maybe the Tigers. The Tigers? The, the Tigers. Well, they're not really bringing anyone in, I don't think. I don't think they're no. really signing anyone. <coughs> Tigers? For the spoon? Or the cows? You got, you got, you're saying the cows? I got Tigers or Cowboys. But we'll, uh, we'll get into it. <laughs> All right. That was the last game of the round anyway. So that is the preview done. Um, really good round of footy. I thought it was really fun. Um, anything profound to say? Uh, this is the first Parramatta game I watched uh, in two weeks. Oh, the full 80? Well, no, I didn't even watch the full 80. I think I watched. Okay, so here's what happened. So okay. you remember that the bomb that Parra put up, and then obviously Ronald Papenhausen touches it, knocks it on. Right. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't call that, and then Kenny yeah. Bromwich comes from an offside position, touches it. That's yeah. offside. That's, That's a turn off. And then um, no, well I I I'll said I'll 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 um I'll deal with that. Anyway, I think they got a set restart or a penalty from that set, and they went on to score in the corner, and that is a turn off. About to turn off. Oh, all right, guys, uh, don't forget to follow all our socials and um, congratulations to the prize winner. Um, yeah, good on you. I hope you're in the prime of your life. And yes, thank you. Thanks for coming.